This film is based on events that took place in Cornwall in the summer of 1913. Mountains, boys! Bloody mountains they got! What do you think of that, then? Mountains like Boris Fowl they got! They're white and snowy! Look! Snowy in August!
Jack. For no use to say no. Twelve shilling a week, then paying. Proper surprise it was to us. But usually they bed us down in some old hall, but no. Billy did, they said. <laughs> A pleasant surprise, of course. We're early sleep, too. Mr. Griffith, do you mean? The copper, I mean. Mr. Griffith, his name is. Well, where do we propose sleeping to, then? Well, we've got our own bedrolls, is you? Bed down anywhere we can. Well, anywhere convenient. Well. Wow. Hey, just pick a place that suits you, then. We could be here some old time, looks of things. One and all. That's the motto we Cornishmen round these parts. Come in. You're welcome sitting along with us if you care to. Thank you. Drink cider, do we?
Cup of tea for you. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry to get you up so early. It's no matter. I have to be up myself. I'll be old Dorothy be six. Oh, I thought you was... You're not working, are you? Trade Disputes Act, 1911. The right to peaceful picketing is accorded to the striker by Act of Parliament. The right to strike and the right to peaceful picketing. Yes, yeah, Trade Disputes Act, 1911. Tell me answers. How does it suit you doing these bags? Oh, it's all right. I shan't stop in the nose. Not for the owners of no bugger. If Mr. Sammy died, he'll tell her to stop and stop in the will. Till he do, I'll keep her fighting pumping. I shan't stop him. Don't worry, Dado. Come to look after you, we have. Supporting the local boys, we are. In case of serious disorder, see? Just one or two of these buggers might give us... I don't want no violence. Thank you. 
It's in the long term. You want to stay the way you are all your lives. Hey, Mary, you're going to stay. Stick with us. I'll stick with you. You stick with us. Come on. Hey, Mary, what's going on? Come on, striking for, glass porches around thy front door, no work between meals, and Timbal is not a smoking future. That's what you were striking for. Keep thy mouth shut, Odin, or else you'll find that a of yours to get attended to. Ah, leave it, leave it. Come on, leave it. Not the way. Currants in your cake, and piggy pudding every day, and two times on Sunday. Bread and hard cheese, my boys. Bread and hard cheese, that's good enough for the likes of thee. Again with the Welsh's lads. Come on, this long old road for a game of football, innit? Hey, I come down here to play football with we, my old lover, I tell you that. Think of paying these day wages. <laughs> oh, it's not like growing your own stuff, is there? Hmm. Astra throws pig bucket in when they reckon ours.
Good old holiday this is for us. Tell you the truth, I don't know what we're doing here at all. We're picked men we are, you know. Oh, special training, yeah? Guards training. Those marching, rifle drill, sabre drill, physical education, and instruction in writing reports. Well, every man, once he's selected out of the force, well, out of the general service, he gets a six-week special training. Well, the guards got nothing on us. Look at this, then. Six foot one I am in my stocking feet, and I'm one of the shortest. Oh, yes, yeah, a pick bunch we are. No, no, no. What I mean is you people down here got no idea what a strike is, in a manner of speaking. I know of Rom the Joe. Those lads, when they start something, it's really something. So it stands to reason. You've got to have a special force to deal with them. The first strike I was on was 08. <laughs> that was an interesting strike. The owners imported some black legs from Scotland to keep the pits working. That didn't shoot our boys at all. Rough it was. That's an 09. We had the dock strikes down Cardiff. <laughs> Punching up the niggers of it down there. Now, but the real fight came in 1910. Tonapandi. It brought in police from all over the country. One night, 26th of November it was, I remember it as clear as today, we got word sent down the Metropolitan boys was in trouble. And we were sent for to master their aid. A proper SOS it was. Well, believe you me, we had to fight our way. Charge we did all the way there. <laughs> Upper Street, uh, Hammerin it was called, and well named. Well, the strikers ran before us into the houses, up into the bedroom, see? And they were spouting everything down on us. Coal, flat irons, bricks, the lot. Well, unfortunately, I stopped a bedchamber pot. Split open me helmet. You know, the 15 stitches I had put in my head. There was an inspector killed in that fight. <laughs> yeah, there was a proper fight up there. I'll tell you, though, after there was 500 strikers attended Dr. Swellin's surgery in Pontypridd alone. Yeah. They had good cause to strike, mind. Hard work, wages rotten. Well, same as you lot down here. No, but up there in the cornfields, never see the light of day, bar of a Sunday. No, I tell a lie, Saturday they go down again on a Sunday. Oh, it's a damn fine race of people in the Welsh miners, you know. Well, what I mean is that they're very similar to the Cornish people they are. Hard working people. Well, share their last crust with you, same as you people do. Love a song and that, like your lot. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very similar to you fellows. And I've seen the work you fellows do now. Heavy work, that is. Heavier than mine in. Why, here are you got to be to do work of that nature, the hours you work. Oh, it's harder work than the mines, no doubt of it. Well, the conditions might be better. Well... I thought you said I wanted to take it along with me. We had a mind to go over Andy's if you were to be late back. Well, I'd be stopping to the finish. There now. Don't go getting yourselves all tangled up. Do I have to? Yes, you do. You are what I said. Go along. There were tuppence in these trousers. Whether you 
your smoke, I just suppose. Let me do that for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, I beg pardon, Mr. Stockley. You'll be going to the meeting, I take it? All right. I'll walk along with you, if I may. Only I have to report there for duty, see? Well, being as we've experienced controlling large crowds, we've been detailed... <sighs> Tell you the truth, I'm not too sure of the road. If it's no trouble, I mean. No tend old trouble. Well, even decided then? Oh, are you likely to be in bed by the time you get home? Ah, likely. The uh, speech isn't that. Well, get it going then. Right. Well, I'll uh, say good day then, Mrs. Good day, Mr. Griffith. Seven weeks since our brothers at Khan stenched down their tools and began this battle in which we are all engaged. Today we number 5,000, and that is nine tenths of the entire industry! Hooray! You give us the pie and we'll give you the clay! Hold the fort, for we are coming, you, you men. Quiet, boys, quiet! Let's hear what Mr. Benson got to say. The employers have demanded that we keep the engines pumping to protect their property. And until now, we have done this. But no longer. We will not protect their property. Hey! We will not protect the masters, nor their creatures. And by that, I mean those men who are crawling back to work. Betraying their comrades. Ooh. We look with abhorrence, contempt, and disgust at these blacklegs. And we know, we know where they live. We know their height, their weight, and the color of their hair. And we shall not forget. Yeah. All the boys are out. Well, remember the black leg traders, the longest day they live! Hooray! I'm with you, boys, I'm with you, tell with bloody traders! Call down some rain! <laughs> <laughs>
I am here today because there are people to whom I minister week after week who have not got a living wage, while the masters live in comfort and drive about in motor cars. We hear a lot about the rights of property from the employers. But I say to the bosses, we are not going to respect that property to which you lay claim, and which is not your property, but stolen property. God did not create property. God created a garden, a garden which is this earth, our earth which God gave to all of us so that we might toil in it and live in plenty, that we might prosper, all men, all women, all children, equal under the Lord, not for the benefit of a handful of greedy men to expropriate and exploit, men who use their monopolistic powers to exploit the labor of fathers, and to condemn the wives and children to slow starvation. Men who rob us of the fruits of the earth, which God gave to all of us. Yes, friends, the master may walk among us as a respected member of our community. But make no mistake about it, that man, that boss, that master is a robber. He robs us all. For what is upon the face of the earth and that which lies beneath the earth belongs to us, to all of us. It is our gift from God. Down with the masters! <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> Seems strange. You and me out in the sunshine together and it not a Sunday. <laughs> Proper gentry we are. There's gentry. Gentry means living off the backs of others. An idle existence. Oh, do we be quiet, Manuel? So, man, Mr. Griffith. Hi, watch it. Hello, then. Hello, you. I've got you up in the pub. Go on. Hello, then. Well, this aren't for the old pay dish. Well, fruits of the earth, as the minister said. <laughs> yeah, if they bury us, it's worth a lot of money. Burgers would have a fence up round them. And be paying we five pounds an hour to pick them. We were sent for down to wheel dubbers. Local police panicked. Glamorgan sent for to save the situation. That's for you. A threatening situation, I once it wasn't. But when our lads come marching up, the pickets formed up orderly, offered no violence of any kind. You know, between you and me, I wouldn't be surprised if we wasn't asked to take over the policing of the whole area. I've said nothing against the local boys, mind. But it's, it's wonderful the, the impression a well-disciplined body of men can make on a crowd that's used to having its own way. You're a good a taste for them than to lose them. Oh, we better off than most of the missus and me. Those many never taste butcher's meat from one week to the next. That's when they work and leave alone now. There's people paying rent for houses so rotten they can. they can look about of their beds and count the stars be night. It's hard to think about with a beautiful country around you all the time. Well, back home is different. And everything's black. Black and grey. Houses, streets, countryside round about, even. Ah, it takes the colour out of things, does that old coal? Or the coal dust? <laughs> down the air. Something else altogether. Them clay mountains. Snow, I thought, when I seen them first off. Yeah, and palm trees down the station. It's like fairyland. Like, like, like a panto I saw when I was a nipper. Like painted colours. There's white and, and blue. Green and golden sunlight. It's wonderful. It takes your mind off the suffering. It does. Ow. Oh. It's some art, that's for sure. I never noticed no summer like it, not for years. It is enjoyable, no denying. 
But unfortunately, just bosses where they've seen time, see? Dry pit never worried the masters. A bit of rain would give the lad some encouragement. It's hard to keep him solid with the weather against him, on top of everything else. We've got to stick together. That goes without saying. Now, the prime consideration of industrial action is solidarity on the part of the workers. Basic, that is. In a steel mill I was before I got accepted into the force. This black legging will beat us in the end. Well, stick her to a dynamite will maybe speak sense. An argument won't convince. When I got the chance of being accepted into the force, it was bad times we had. Twelve shillings a week to take home, and that in a good week. Lay off short times, or three days, four days a week, you'd call yourself lucky. There was no orders, see? It was bad times in the industry. It's not a bad life, you know? Respected you are by the community at large. And then picked men we are. A special training. And that special training is expensive training. Oh, physical training? Wrestling, anything you can mention. Boxing, all in. Oh, you wouldn't get better if you were to go to a college. Of course, there's an element. Bound to be an element of, of troublemakers, isn't there? Yeah. He's one of they fags yours, will he? Then. Got enough now, have you? Yes, sir. Well, I said I'd meet some of the boys down the pub. I'll see you later. He's a rum bugger, that one, and no mistake. Hey, it's good. I don't know what I do here. Hello again, then. Evening. Hey, uh, would you like a glass or something, missus? Well, what about you, Mr. Stocker? A glass of beer? No, no thanks. Oh, come on now. Change your mind. See what it's to be. A bottle of stout. Save your money, friend. Which all there for is in the side room. Anything we want. Spirits, too, whiskey, rum, anything. So you just say the word, I'll get you what you fancy. <laughs> Only, uh, we won't ask where it come from, will we? You see, there are certain people who want to keep on the right side of us, boys. <laughs> so why don't you join us? Hey, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> you having a drink on the bosses. <laughs> hey, come on, now, say what it's to be. <laughs> oh, nothing, thanks. Well, I tell you what I'll do. I I'll bring a drop down home with me when I come. We'll all have a drink, then. A drink and a smoke on the bosses. Manual. You'll be careful, Manuel. I'm always careful, my lover. I never know what you get up to. Oh, no. I believe we're going down to an arsehole. 
Blow the Employers' Federation out in the street for a start. Then down to Carn Stents and slit the throat of a black leg or two. Then, if it's still dark, we'll likely raid the county headquarters and carry off the chief constable for hostage. You don't belong making jokes, Manuel Stalker. <laughs> you got a wife and kiddies to consider. What do you got that stick for? Never know what some old rabbit might poke his nose out of edge. If you happen to have a helmet on his head, so much the worse for him. You proper amazed. Get on, then. No need to wait up. I shall. I shall sit there till you come home. Then even please yourself. Only me, missus. Well, come on in, then. I brought a bit of a drink for us. You first start with me. Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 was, I was just looking in. I, I, I bought some drink for us. Mr. Stocker's out. So I'll bid you good night, Mr. Griffith. Oh, how well, is he? Yes, Mr. Griffith. I'm not expected back to late. He's gone visiting with some relations. Herbert? Oh, no, my name. Herbert, my name is. <laughs> There's no need for Mr. and that. A friend, I am. Friend to the Cornish people. Oh, lovely race. Lovely people. Voices like birds, they sing like angels. It's like home to me to hear the singing. Carl on and Flanders. Whatever are you thinking of? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend, honest. I just got carried away by the singing. I didn't mean to offend, honest. I think you best get some sleep. Oh, come on now, missus. Please don't be angry. But what I wanted to say was meeting people like you, kindly people, generous people, well, much that means to us, far from our Homes and loved ones. But you and Mr. Stocker. Only oh, there's a character for you. That husband of yours. Oh, there's a deep one for you. Doesn't say much, mind. But he's deep, very deep. You know, Mrs. I envy that man. A very fortunate man he is. He's not blessed with, with worldly goods, but something above price he's got. Well, I, I'm not a married man myself. I'm not so fortunate. If you're trying to make up to me, mister, you're wasting your time. Make up to you? Well, now, why should I do that? Oh, there's no pretty words on my tongue. A plain man, I may speak out plain. It, it, it means a lot to me, the way you, you've taken us into your homes and, and, and are playing with the children, sitting in the comfort of your kitchen. What I'm trying to say is, thank you. That's what I'm trying to say. We ain't paid for it. No need for thanks. The best to eat. Toasted the boss's elf once too often, seemingly. Too good to me by half, you are, Mrs. Too good. 
good by half. Bloody fool I am. I'm sorry about the language. I don't know what I'm saying. There's the truth of it. Blasting at the pit. Blasting, that's what it was. Wheel Hope. They must be working down Wheel Hope. Black legs brought in be light. <laughs> Black legs most light. It's getting late. I think I'll... I'll say goodnight then, missus. You'll most likely be waiting up for Mr. Stalker. No. Oh, no, I shall go to bed too. he would likely be back late, seeing as he's visiting with family. Mamo, for you, you've been taking the law into your own hands. I be. How many times do you need telling there's a right way and a wrong way of doing things? And yours is a wrong one. And you more talk. What are you trying to do? Make the strike or break it. <laughs> Mr. Vincent? I have asked you to come out here today because there is a matter which I feel bound to address you, which I do not think should be raised in God's meeting house. Last night, the homes of three clay workers were destroyed in an act of inexcusable violence. I know that these men were guilty of blacklegging. Do not think that I have any sympathy for men who betray their fellows. I do not... I do not sympathize. I do not sympathize, though I may well understand and forgive. But up till now, all our actions have been characterized by a most praiseworthy restraint. Throughout this long and bitter struggle, we have maintained ourselves as Christian men and women.
It's even looking a sight better fed than we and. Uh, no prospects is sight better than earn, and then. I've been thinking, Manuel. I've been considering putting the children out to aunties and going back in the service. What are we thinking of that for? We could manage like that, me and the children. Are well, you managing all right? If this old bugger got to go before our time, then go she will. I don't mean that. I mean, well, if you was thinking of making a change. What do you mean by that? You know what I mean. Where are you working, Jacket? Well, there's plenty of gone. I don't see you'd regret it. Uncle Bill Shepherd went and he come back with a fortune of money. Oh, but they don't pick gold out of streams now. They pays wages, same as here. Sight better wages by what they ain't saying. Wages is wages. Oh, you must stubbornness, that old hog there. <laughs> ah, my handsome. One of my mates gave her a ride on his bike. Uh, come on, I'll take it back, eh? Hey, come on, come on. What about me? She had a ride on her yeah. Hey, don't worry about that. Come on, I'll give you a ride. Come on, oh, up, hey. Hey. come on. Yeah. 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 Come on, man. Yeah. Up to you then, yeah. you got it. Yeah. Yeah. One. Go oh, on, then, I'll give you. Touch the ball, touch the ball. What are you take it, then? Oh, you fucking boring. Touch the ball, touch the ball. We're catching him now, we're catching him, thank you. I will make the game of my life! You see the new house and you all at the house! We got through this time, we got through this time! Oh, man, you're stuck her! Oh, man, you're stuck her! Oh, man, you're stuck her! Come, you air this minute! Come on, now, the both of you! Get in George now, before I take a switch! Go on, get along! Run along! You should be ashamed of yourself! A policeman, too! Drunk! But well, I'm doing no harm. What's going on anyway? Well, you know better. I thought I'd die for shame when the minister spoke out, and he was right. Same like Mr. Vincent were telling me. Oh, yes, I heard him. There's right ways of going about things and wrong ones. Oh, but no, you got to go about doing violence to others, disrespecting their lives and property. And you too, get along inside like clean you up proper to visit auntie. You must come along of us or you must stop. And don't he complain there's no dinner for you. There's pasties on the shelf and you can help yourself when you minded. Go on, get along in. Her mother did suffer a with her nerves. Once a woman do get her jaws working, <laughs> this problem is trying to stop us.
Well, looks like we're on our own soon then. Oh. I did have half a skin full to be truthful. Mind to go, eh? Holiday, you said to us. And you're right. It is nothing but holiday. It didn't strike at all. It's nothing but holiday. I tell you, one bit was for going back on account of the captain, a taking it personal against like himself. No talk were in proper low spirit, seems. Them that were out were saying they didn't belong or hurting his feelings. Seeing as how oh, he were a good old captain and true none of his doing it, we're out, see? I tell you, the strike committee had to go down there and get the captain to speak to the mates and tell him he didn't hold it personal and he was free to stay up with their comrades as long as was fit. Oh, what do you think of that now? Be before we start. Too long, touch it and cap to the boss. Too long, a dirty cupboard, getting off pavement when bosses go by. Too long, saying sir. Too long, being, being ignorant and, and too long being a fear to lose your place. Too long, it is. Too deep. I don't mistake me. I ain't seen me a fear to fight. Cornish man, all Welsh man, we we none a fear to fight, Mister. Plain truth. Of Scared of winning. Or get flooded. for telling off. We're straightening it up, shall we? Ha! Fucker it! Oh, no! He's <laughs> 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 stopped. He stopped a chamber party, he said. <laughs> <laughs> 
I tell you this. That, that chamber pot. We're a copper stopper. <laughs> How's that for a good name? Is that copper it? stopper. Did you hear? <laughs> do you know I stopped a few too? Hey, do you not a few too, a few too? No! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, tell you what you are now. You, you stop her's copper! <laughs> stop her's copper! <laughs> are called out. Ben, stop me on the road. They intend to bring in blacklegs down the bugle pit and all pickets are to be in position by dawn. You to report to the committee up at the chapel be midnight. Must get these people to disperse. This is an illegal assembly. We're picketing strikers. We have the right of peaceful picketing, and we claim to exercise that right. The men have sticks. They're carrying weapons. Man's entitled to carry a stick. You'll tell them to drop their sticks. But we may proceed if we drop them. You'll be permitted to picket within the terms the law allows. Well, boys, we must drop our sticks. No! No! We don't drop our sticks. We shan't be allowed to pick it. No! We must drop our sticks. No, sir. May we pass? You are an unlawful assembly. You will either disperse or you'll be liable to arrest. My But I must protest! All your people to disperse or my men will start making arrests. No! Our sovereign lord, the king, charges and commandeth all persons being assembled Immediately to disperse themselves riot. and peaceably to depart. He's reading the riot act! Or to their lawful business. Come on, lads! Follow me and we'll the cut the black out! Come on, this way! <laughs> Let's get some order! Oh! 
When we got the order to charge, we charged. That's all there was to it. We don't stop to think once you get the order. That's a Glamorgan's for you. Well, we give you a taste of the ton of pandas, I'm not denying. But we're not brutes, mind. Just anyone asking for trouble, they've only got themselves to blame. There's no good complaining afterwards. Something personal? Six weeks after the police charge, all the men returned to work on the employer's terms. They had held out for three months, but had gained nothing. 